Got rings? Yeah. Okay, good. Oh, yeah. yeah, and there's a glass. Mm -hmm. If I can have the glass. glass. Oh, Are we on? Yeah. We're on. It's okay. This is the rehearsal. Oh, this is the rehearsal. This is the rehearsal. Thank you. And thank you. Yeah. <sighs> well, Susan, Michael, I want to welcome the two of you here this afternoon. On your behalf, I want to thank Emily and, and Andrew for being your witnesses, too. While the three of us are here to officiate and witness this, this is really only about the two of you. In the years to follow, you're going to be able to remember this time with fond memories. It's a, it's a very intimate time in your lives. So we're, we're gathered here to unite Susan and Michael together in marriage. Marriage is an institution that's regulated by governments and it's sanctioned by religions. It only becomes real in the hearts and the lives of two people. And so this celebration, it's only the outward sign of your inward union of hearts. And marriage as such can be the most tender of all relationships that we choose to have in life. Let us pray. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we give thanks for this moment that brings Susan and Michael together in marriage. We do recognize with thanksgiving the journeys that have brought them to this time. We celebrate with them the hopes that they hold for their life together. We ask your blessing upon them to sustain them through those difficult times that do come to every relationship. We pray that they may continue to find in each other the resources that will nurture their marriage. May they continue to grow together. May their love for one another deepen with the passing years. We pray this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, now all peoples of the world throughout all times have recognized marriage. It's fresh. Okay. <laughs> Might need it for him, though. Okay. Let me know. If you're okay. Ready. I put a couple of clean ones in. <laughs> you know, if you study wedding ceremonies, I think you'll find that there are two themes that are usually prevalent. Uh, the first theme is they, <laughs> they try to give you advice. Yeah, and the second one is they do offer you a blessing or a wish for the best. And with tremendous insight, and yet very simply, the words from an Apache song, their form of ceremony, have been translated this way. Now you will feel no rain, for each of you will be shelter for the other. Now you will feel no cold, for each of you will be warmth for the other. Now there's no more loneliness. Now you are two persons, but there's only one life before you. Go now to your dwelling to enter in the days of your life together. May your days together be good and long upon the earth. Now comes some of that advice stuff I'm supposed to give you. <laughs> yeah. First of all, happiness in marriage, it's never been a thing that just happens. First of all, a good marriage needs to be created, just like you're doing now. Each one of you had to live the lives that you've lived before you met. You had to go through what you've gone through to be the person that you were when you met. And since the time you met, even though it was uh, super like it, instant. <laughs> it was. <laughs> At the same time, you've grown it's obvious to the three of us to do your best friends. And you do respect each other. And you do trust each other. And you do really love each other. And those are the foundations for a wonderful, beautiful marriage. Well, as Michael and I definitely know, if you want to keep things running smoothly, they've got to be maintained. They've got to be made. <laughs> maintenance is yep, a big maintenance. word. Maintained. And, and it's no different in marriage. And it's the little things that often are the big things. It's never growing so old that you can't hold hands because mm -hmm. the way you're holding hands right now, little squeezes, it, mm -hmm. it says I love you in ways that words could never express. And at the same time, it's probably important to remember to say I love you at least once a day. Mm -hmm. At least. <laughs> at least. It's never going to sleep angry with each other and it's in no time taking each other for granted. And this courtship of yours, it shouldn't end with your honeymoon. This courtship, it should continue through all of the years to follow. It's having a mutual sense of values and common objectives. It's forming circles of love that gather in your entire circles of families and friends. It's 
doing things for each other, never in an attitude of duty or of sacrifice, but with a spirit of joy, and demonstrate that gratitude in thoughtful ways. While it's obvious you think the world of Michael, it's never looking for him to be wearing a halo. <laughs> and Susan has been the answer to your, pre your prayers and your dreams, I know that. Yes. And it's never looking for her to be wearing the wings of an angel either. <laughs> and the idea behind that advice is you never want to love somebody so much you think they're perfect. <laughs> Right. That's right. way too high for right. to put on anybody. <laughs> but it is cultivating plenty of flexibility, patience, understanding, and a sense of humor. It's also having the capacity to be able to forgive and to forget while giving each other the atmosphere in which each of you may continue to grow. And so it is finding room for things of the Spirit, a common search for the good and the beautiful in life. Establishing a relationship in which your independence is equal, your dependence is mutual. And the obligation reciprocal, so it's not only marrying the right person, as we'd say out here in Wyoming, it's trying to be the right partner. <laughs> in the spirit of love that you're standing before us today, I'll ask you, are you ready to be married? Yeah. Yes. Michael, if you desire to marry Susan, repeat after me. Hi, Michael. And you get to say this to her. Hi, Michael. Hi, Michael. Do take you, Susan. Do take you, Susan. To be my wedded wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. <sighs> for better, for worse. Definitely for better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. For as long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. And Michael, if you have other words that you'd like to say for Susan, you may state them at this time. <laughs> and Susan, if you desire to marry Michael, you okay. sure you don't want to take me up? <laughs> okay. Repeat these words after me. Hi, Susan. Hi, Susan. Do take you, Michael. Do take you, Michael. To be my wedded husband. To be my wedded husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. <laughs> From this day forward. For better or for worse. For better or for worse. For richer or for poorer. For richer or for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. For as long as we both shall live. For as long as we both shall live. I said it wasn't going to. <laughs> and you have these rings that you're offering as symbols of your love for one another. Let these rings say to all that your love for one another is deep and that your commitment to one another, that it becomes everlasting. Michael, if you take Susan's ring and place it upon her ring finger with these words, with this ring, I thee wed. With this ring, I thee wed. So if you may take Michael's <coughs> ring and place it upon his ring finger with those very same words, with this ring, I thee wed. With this ring, I thee wed. There we go. <laughs> and the rings that you've just exchanged are symbols of the vows. Those promises that I know you're not only making to each other, but they're promises that you've just made to yourselves. I believe the rings are used at least in part because they've got a perfect form like true love with no beginning, no end. And yet your rings are the beginning mm. of a long, long journey together. A journey you're going to find filled with wonders, surprises, laughter, a few tears, mm. celebration, grief, and joy. Well, may your rings always glow in the reflection of the warmth and the love that is flowing between the two of you right now. Solomon is the attributed source for the book of Ecclesiastes. <clears throat> in this reading, he comments on the benefits of the two of you having found each other, being together, as opposed to you being individuals on your own, on your own roads. And then he brings in the power of God's Holy Spirit to bind your union together. Two people can accomplish more than twice as much as one. They get a better return for their labor. If one person falls, the other can reach out and help. And people who fall when they're alone are in real trouble. And on a cold night, two under the same bank blanket can gain warmth from each other. But how can one be warm alone? A person standing alone can be attacked and defeated. But two can stand back to back and conquer. Here's where God's Holy Spirit comes into your relationship. 
free or even better for a triple braided cord is not easily broken. All things have beginnings and our lives are really full of many beginnings. And yet I don't believe there's any really as special as the beginning of the commitment of two souls to each other. And so this in your hearts, I want to say just a, a few more words to start you, Susan and Michael, out on your, out on your brand, new, brand new beginning together. And so may your marriage bring you all of the exquisite excitement that marriage should bring, while life grants you patience, tolerance, and understanding. Mm -hmm. You may always need each other, not so much to fill an emptiness within you, but so that you can both find your own true full potentials. In so many ways, your relationship should be like the relationship that this valley has to those mountains across mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. When you look across there, you'll notice those dramatic differences. And it's the differences, it's the contrasts that act as compliments, making each more powerful, each more beautiful because of those contrasts. So let it be for you when you find you've got a contrast in your relationship. May you put it in the form of being complimentary. Yeah. yeah. And they always need each other, but never out of weakness. May you want one another, but not out of lack. And may entice each other, but not compel each other. And embrace each other, but not encircle each other. May you succeed in all those important ways with each other, never failing in the little graces. And may you look into each other, often finding things to praise and say, I love you, and take no notice of each other's small faults. And should anything ever try to come between you, may you both have the good sense to push it out of the way and take the first step back together. Yes. And may you continue in that mystery, because I can see you're already there, that continue in that mystery that's the awareness of each other's presence. No more physical and spiritual, but a complete and total awareness. With these words in mind, I have a deep love with the two of you. So obviously have me. You continue to find your future filled with dreams and traps and love and laughter. And a new beginning, each and every day. For as much as you, Susan and Michael, have consented together before God in the presence of this company by the power of me by the state of Wyoming, I do pronounce you as husband and wife. Now, in the breaking of the glass is a tradition that originally signified the destruction of Jerusalem and the community's hope for its rebuilding, its restoration. Also, many different other things have been said that this can symbolize. One of them is, should breaking of this glass be the worst thing that ever happens in your marriage. <laughs> yeah, when this glass is broken, it's customary to shout Mazel Tov. Are you ready? Yeah. Mazel Tov! Wow. <laughs> you did it. Wait, he didn't tell you to kiss me. <laughs> you may kiss your husband. <laughs> are called uh -huh. shards, yes. the breaking of the glass. And he brought me a holder, it's an upside down triangle that has this, and it's all glass. brass mm -hmm. and glass, oh. and it has this brass rose, mm -hmm. and in it says, uh, you are my beloved and my beloved is mine, and it's got Hebrew inscription in it mm -hmm. as well, and that's what you're supposed to put those in. Oh. And I'd never heard of that, so it was beautiful. Yes. 